Sometimes it's just a healthy living. Show no that new advice. It's a crafty to walk by all your eat and I'll punch you up to get twice. But our father's just a waster. Our mother's on the game. She's just a healthy living, but I love her just the same. Bus conductors have been a disappearing breed. Companies forced to dispense with their services in favour of the apparently more economical one-man operated services, where the driver takes on a dual role. But now several companies in Scotland have found that that's been a false economy. The realisation has come about through the decision of London Transport to get rid of its fleet of Routemaster buses, the traditional London bus. Several companies in Scotland have run one on a pilot basis to gauge passenger reaction. But now the first of them, the Paisley-based Clydeside Scottish, have bought a dozen from London Transport and are currently negotiating to buy more. We brought this bus up from London and ran it on a few services. We got such a tremendous response from the public that we felt we had to keep it and indeed we've now bought another 11, so we've got 12 in total. What do they like to run though? Because these buses are actually 25 years old. Well, they may technically be 25 years old, but in fact they have been extremely well looked after in London. In London there are still 1,700 of them running. Um, the machines that we have were last completely rebuilt four years ago, so they are in first class condition despite their apparent age. But what about the conductors then? You've had a good reaction from the passengers, but Super where, where, where do you find conductors these days? Oh, we don't have any problems finding conductors. We've got 12 conductors now in Clyde's side. No problem finding conductors here. Seems a complete turnaround. I mean, four or five years ago you were getting rid of conductors, now you're taking them back on again. I think in four or five years a lot of change has happened. Five years ago there were still labour shortages. Really we were forced to go to one-man operation because we simply couldn't recruit enough staff to operate um, the way we were operating. There's been such a change in the labour market since then that the opportunity has now come to go back, if you like, to the old ways. But we think, and we know from our surveys of the public, that they do like crew operation. We're getting a tremendous reaction from our passengers. Much better with the conductors is on it. Why is that? Well, you get a wee quicker standing weed than being your fear when you come on. It's a better service. The service is a lot quicker now and their buses are usually in time. It's giving the girls a job, isn't it? And it's quite, it serves a purpose. But you used to be a conductor on the trams. What yes. do you think about the, the, the standard of service today? Quite good. Quite good, yeah. It doesn't, got... doesn't be the old trams, but no way. No way. Why not? Oh, no, no way. There's quite a few things to it, actually. It's really enjoyable. You get to meet a few. Uh, an awful lot of nice folk. Is it difficult? No. I really enjoy it. John McAlpin's now hoping to become a driver, and the company are already looking for more conductors for the next batch of London buses. In the meantime, they're delighted with them. They may have done more than three quarters of a million miles each, but they're still reliable, and with fuel consumption of 10 miles to the gallon, twice as economical. Well, looks like set fair on the Paisley buses or the London queues bus. of buses build queues of buses build up at stops, traffic congestion and journeys take much longer. Now the first batch of the 140 conductors are completing their fares please training course, but they're a far cry from the famous clippies of yesteryear. Hey, hello along there, please. Come on now, we haven't got a day. Look, missus, we've got your other time. It's not my fault you've been waiting there for ages. Right, come on then, are you getting on or are you getting off? Hurry along. That's it, bus is full. Right, get the next bus. Driver, is that all you've got? I'm going to my tea. I can't stand here all day. I've got all these other people to attend to. You just have to get off the bus and get the next one, alright? It's the Clippy's Charm School for the new generation of bus conductors. The customer is the most important person. Out is the bad-tempered, loud-mouth image. In is a more diplomatic style of passenger relations. Craig, uh, how would you deal with, say, rowdy football passengers on your bus, football fans? Uh, I would say they were causing disturbance among the other passengers and try and quiet them down. The new breed of fare takers will be on the buses in the Paisley area by the end of next month. But Paisley buddies can rest assured that the days of the full frontal verbal assault are over. See these people? They come in with fivers, ten pound notes. 
and they look at you as if you should have changed. They think it's the Bank of England they've got here, and then they're expecting me to know all the times. I think I preferred them in the old style. Buses aren't just George Watson's life, they're his livelihood too. As general manager of Clydeside Scottish, it's his job to run one of Scotland's largest bus companies, with 375 vehicles and more than a thousand employees. But when he's not working, he has an interest in one particular bus, his own ex-London Transport double-decker Routemaster, now in retirement in Scotland after almost 25 years service in the streets of London. At every opportunity, he gets behind the wheel of RM10, one of the first route masters to be built. He enjoys driving what he considers to be one of the finest vehicles on the road and travels to as many bus rallies as his busy schedule allows. Clydeside actually run commercially 60 route masters, bought from London Transport and a few of them driven to Scotland by George himself. One which was used in the recent Children in Need appeal has already collected three awards at a bus rally. But another of the fleet has pride of place, because Rodney the Routemaster is the subject of a children's book written by George and telling the story of a London bus which comes to Scotland. He had had such a good time with his new friends in Scotland that he didn't really want to go back to London. The next day, all the other bus visitors left for their home garages. Goodbye, said McBeep. I'm going fishing. And I'm going to the seaside, said Alex. Then McTavish and Belinda came along. We're going to show you some of the other places in Scotland, Rodney, said Belinda, before you go back to London. Well, Rodney enjoyed his trip and so did everyone who saw him as he ran through the towns. A London bus in Scotland? <laughs> How nice, they said. Why can't he stay? The book came about one night when I was sitting down watching the television with my daughter and just for a bit of fun we decided we would try and write the kid his book. And uh, we sat down that night and wrote it. And it's the story of Rodney the Routemaster. It's the original story of Rodney. There is Rodney outside, RM652. Uh, Rodney was the very first Routemaster that we brought up to Scotland 18 months ago now. And the book tells a reasonably truthful story of how we came to bring up Rodney and how the public liked the concept so much that we decided rather than send it back we would keep it and buy some more. The book, which sells for 90 pence, is already proving popular with both young and old readers. And in the Clydeside area at least, Rodney could soon become as popular as afford to, to pay the full fare. They are therefore the choice of letting their children walk to school or waiting until after nine o'clock when the half fare does operate and sending their children to school late. The Clydeside Bus Company say the change has been forced on them because they make such high losses on school buses. The company's general manager met the marchers at the door of his office where he was handed a 6,000 signature petition and given a first-hand account of their complaints. And you're blackmailing the parents Sorry? through the children trying via the Strathclyde Regional Council and you're just not on, sir. We are talking about children of five years old having to pay the full fare. And in an area where we have high levels of unemployment, I can assure you that a number of families are finding it impossible to send the children on buses to school. And what's happening is that children have been asked to walk to school and all the inherent dangers that brings. We have a large number of vehicles which uh, work only on school runs in the morning, school runs in the afternoon, and sit idle through the day. There's a vehicle beside us now that's a case in point. Um, it costs us a great deal of money simply to own a vehicle and have it parked up in our garage. It costs us maintenance, tax, insurance, fuel. Even the driver's cost, a run in the morning, a run in the afternoon, is not insignificant. Uh, and in relation to the revenue that we get, we estimate that our costs are four times more than the revenue we're currently getting on these school services. So we face a tremendous problem. It was an answer which didn't satisfy the demonstrators, but after half an hour they left, still unsure what their next move would be.